Audi are all set to launch what they call their Brat Pack this Diwali season. The A5, the S5 and the Cabriolet version. Well, they're going to lure you in, they say, with these cars that have swanky styling and sassy attitude. We're here in Jaipur for a short drive to find out how they are. Well, if it's styling we're talking about, then I think the visuals speak for themselves. There are curves and contours all around that make it quite different and sharp ridges down the bonnet that draw you to the front, making it look athletic. The angled headlamps that cut a ridge out onto the side, the frameless doors and the rake of the rear windscreen with the stylized tail lamps just add to the dramatic appeal of this car. Then, of course, there is the roof line that gives it a sense of occasion. It just flows over to the short deck of the rear. As far as looks go, the S5 differentiates itself a bit with quad tailpipes and the use of brushed aluminium finish at the front bumper, mirrors and rear diffuser. You'll also find S branding on the S5's brake calipers that are for all to see behind the version's racy 5-spoke alloy wheels. Both cars come on 18-inch wheels. Yes, this sportsback A5 or S5 version will turn heads wherever you go. The interior of the A5 is almost identical to the A4. You have that horizontal AC vent that runs right across the dash, the meters, dials, the placement of everything is very, very similar. But here in the A5, what we're seeing is that monotone colouring. The trim level isn't a contrast colour and that makes it look a little more simple, a little more basic actually. However, in the S5, it is a bit different. You do get the contrast and that brightens it up a little bit. Some people do like the minimalistic look and it all comes down to a matter of personal choice. But let's look at what else is on offer. There is the three-spoke steering, the virtual cockpit instrument cluster and there's also a sunroof. You also have the MMI, it's not a touchscreen, but you can control it via the knob and the buttons here, which also has the trackpad. Crisp clear dials, which have the different view modes. As far as storage and practicality goes, you have a glove box, you have cup holders, you have bottle holders in the door, you have a slot for your key, you have the storage in the central console, which also has a nifty gap where you can actually slip your phone in, so um, that's convenient. And of course, a big practical part about this car is the big boot. The sportsback version means there is a large electrically operated hatch and 480 litres of space, which is a good amount of room. Well, it's time to test that back seat. Now, I'm a short person and I can tuck myself into almost any space. So I'm going to bring Nikhil in to illustrate how it would really be for a full-size adult to be sitting behind another full-size adult in the front seat. So I'm going to get Nikhil to adjust the front seat first and then test the back seat. Well, Nikhil had to duck quite a bit to get into the low slung seat with the low roof line. Headroom at the back is a bit tight for anyone taller than 5 feet 9 inches or so. And there is a reasonable amount of leg room but if you want to sprawl in the back, you'd be better off in an A4. The rear back seat is also a touch upright and firm and though Audi has provided a rear centre headrest and seat belt, the seat is really contoured for two passengers and isn't for three. We began our short drive in the A5 which has the 2-litre diesel that produces 190 HP. The A5's diesel is really refined. I mean, it's difficult to believe that it is a diesel engine. It's smooth and it does have good amount of punch as well. Every time you put your foot down, you get a nice surge of power. The 2.0-litre makes driving effortless. It's eager to respond and in general city or normal highway driving, you'll be more than pleased with its performance. There are different driving modes and when you do switch to dynamic and adopt a more sporty driving style, though throttle response gets better and shifts faster, it doesn't really hold a gear and the 4,500 RPM red line seems to come up soon. However, there are paddle shifters and Tiptronic to keep you engaged and I'd have to say we are being nitpicky with the details. Overall, the A5's engine does a really good job. 
If at all, it's the steering that's a little lackluster. Now the steering, though quite precise, actually feels light and over-assisted and it takes away a little from the feeling, um, just doesn't let you feel as connected to the road as you would like. The A5 may not be the best handling in its segment and veering on the softer side, but then, if you want sporty, it's really the S5 you should be looking at, which I will shift over to soon. But before I do, let me tell you how this rides over our roads. It's got a nice, pliant, low-speed ride, so generally flattens out the bumps and potholes really well. But as you pick up the pace, the flip side is that you do get a little bit of movement with that softness. And with that, the time in the A5 came to an end. It was short, but I was not unhappy because up next was the 3-litre V6 petrol on the S5 that produces 354 HP and a whopping 500 Nm of torque. This engine is a bomb. That guttural note of the exhaust, the acceleration, the punch definitely puts a big smile on your face and this is a car you can have fun with. The straight Jaipur Highway really gave us an opportunity to let the S5 stretch its legs and stretch it can. It felt like an agile athlete running strides at an alarming pace. The claimed 0 to 100 is 4.7 seconds and I definitely believe that. The way the engine punches to its 6,500 RPM limiter will leave you grinning. And it's not just the ferocity of the acceleration, but also the soundtrack that goes with it that leaves you wanting for more. Wrenching my hands away from the S5 steering wheel was tough. It's a car that really engages you and draws you in. And while it's a beast out on the highway, it's still perfectly capable of doing the daily duty and dealing with city traffic. Well, Audi have turned them the Brat Pack and they definitely do have that attitude and they definitely have the styling to draw people in. Will definitely set you apart as far as styling is concerned. But what I've really enjoyed with these two cars is the engines. The A5's diesel is extremely refined and smooth and punchy as well. But the S5's engine, that's a bomb. My heart goes to the S5. कभी न रुकने वाले जुनून को रफ्तार देता है सर्वो वर्ल्ड क्लास लुब्रिकेंट्स